Hey everyone, Joshua Hamlin here at BrickCon Seattle 2022, and today we're taking a look at this massive model of the Eiffel Tower. So I've got the builder with me here, if you want to introduce yourself, and then we'll dive into this build. Hi, my name is Eric Del Sesto, and uh, spent two years building this. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm not surprised it took you two years. How tall is this? It's eight feet, um, it's, so it's one to 134 scale compared to the original. Okay. And I, the scale was really set by this, this uh, Lego beam here, the Technique 15 beam. Once I had that and I had the leg design, that really set the tone and the scale for everything else going up. You have an immense number of those beams. Do you know how many pieces are in this whole model? Over 25,000 pieces. Um, and about half of it is in Lego Studio. But then I stopped using Studio, so I, I kind of had to approximate the count after that, yeah. So that's incredible. Take us through kind of the design journey of this and how it came together sure. for you. I, I, I love technique and I kind of wanted a real challenge. So I was thinking Golden Gate Bridge, which is near us, or am I going to build something like that? Um, and we had a trip to Paris that was canceled because of COVID. So I thought, well, I'll try the Eiffel Tower. And I, I did five versions of this leg and I've been showing people the, the basic leg design there, how it achieves that angle. So once I had the leg working and I knew I could get that, I started trying to bridge and once, once I could get that whole bottom level done, I realized I, I can keep going, just have to taper this going up. And then the architectural details was also like a whole project because I'm really into more of the structure, but I really got lucky in, in like how many arches here, the nine arches match what it looked like in 1889. And, and the way these things tilt underneath is just perfect. Um, I matched the restaurants here. Um, this is like a, a, a ring. It's like a donut ring that just sits around the side. So that was a, a great approach there. Um, just a lot of happy accidents and the count of pieces, how things worked out. Um, like I love, I love the arch here. And I, I was able to mirror that on the inside too. So when you look at it from below, it really matches the original. It's kind of cool. Yeah. That's amazing that you're able to, to capture so much of the actual building with Lego like this. And I think it's, it's obviously instantly recognizable. And then what, ha what, do, what do we have as we go further up to the top there? Sure, so um, it's in four sections and in this, this section there's an elevator and then the top section there's an elevator. That matches the original 1889, the Siamese elevators that were counterweights for each other. And then there's an elevator here going all the way down on a curved track. Um, they're all chain link, Lego chain link driven. Uh, these two elevators have lights because um, the last show I took it to, almost nobody realized there were elevators in there. So now it's more, more obvious the elevators are there and moving. Uh, so we got the three elevators and then I found a, on Amazon, I found a little LED that glows like that. So it kind of looks like a searchlight up top. That's the effect I was going for. And now in real life, there are different uh, observatory points, right? So where all can people actually get to on the Eiffel Tower here? Yeah, it's just like the, the actual tower. They can come to this level one. They can come up here to this level. There's a, a landing, in the original tower, there's a landing platform where you switch elevators. They don't have that anymore. Um, and then people could go up to the very top. So I could put you know, little one brick figures at each level to show that, but um, that, that kind of matches the original. And then tell us a little bit more about the building designs here as well. Sure, so this, I really tried to match the, the Eiffel Tower from 1889 when it was first built for the World's Fair in Paris. I was matching the blueprints that are the book on the table there. And they basically show that just like Epcot Center at, at Disney World, you had these four different uh, restaurants from different countries at the World's Fair. Uh, so I tried to match the, the very different architecture for each restaurant, but it's buried in the middle. It's really hard to see. Um, and then um, tried to match the arches out here that match the original. Um, yeah. And then if you can, you mentioned the model over there on the table. We can go take a closer look sure. at that and kind of explain a little bit more yeah. of the angles and the build process here. Right. So, like I said, I wanted something challenging to build, and I thought this is like the basic building structure. But for the tower, it's pivoted back like this and this way. So it's pivoted in two axes. And if you put cross beams on, it lines up exactly as a... From 90 degrees, it becomes a 65 degree angle, which matches these blueprints exactly. So just got lucky that the cross bracing I needed to make this strong also made it match the blueprints. And then I follow this pattern all the way up and it just becomes more and more vertical as you go. And the other really cool thing about this is these connection points here in the corners, they're incredibly strong. So if, if you put this down 
and you have cross bracing and you could put like a stack of books on it, it's not going to break. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. It's so amazing the kind of different configurations of Lego parts there and the strength that you can get from that. Yeah, yeah that was a great happy accident in building this. It took a few iterations to get there, but uh, that was fun. Yeah. Was there a lot of experimentation with different sections, like that, that type of building technique, kind of figuring those things out, rebuilding that Absolutely. sort of thing? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think I was prepared for failure all the way along. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this arch here, see if I can get it going. I'm going to try to match the, the, tr um, the lattice pattern here and here, go to, go to flat lift arms, or thin lift arms. And then um, this platform, which lifts up all by itself, the fact that it sits just right on, on these cross beams, it's like a floating platform, and yet the, the restaurants don't hit the outer shell, like the outer structure. Um, a lot of that took, um, you know, some, some maneuvering and some trial and error, um, but it, it all worked out in the end. Yep. And then what is uh, transporting and set up at a convention like for this display? Yeah, good question. So the legs come off and we can put wheels on this wooden platform to roll it out. Uh, this, this much of it, will fit in the back of my car. And then there's a bunch of pins that come out at these levels to separate these, and there's some electrical connectors. So in half an hour, we can be ready to roll out to the car. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's really portable. And you have like a ladder or something to set this up? How does that work? Yeah, I think we scared everybody, because every time we built it like this, uh, we've tried a different approach. This time, we built the whole thing with it on the floor. And my wife and I lifted it to put the legs on. So the, just the two of us holding it up and we're screwing the legs on the bottom and I could look across and people they were like shocked and scared that they were about to see a big disaster. <laughs> One guy was making a YouTube video just in case it fell. So uh, luckily it did not but uh, that's the process and uh, hopefully better and better over time. <laughs> Have the elevators and the functions in there been working smoothly and if something happens how are you able to fix that? <laughs> yeah great question. Um, so this bottom elevator with the curved track and chain link, that's the same design I've had even at the last show. And that seems to be working pretty well. I had to, had to get rid of some friction points, but it's still not perfect. These top two are basically re-engineered. They used to be fishing line, like monofilament, running over little rubber wheels. And that was causing a lot of slip. And if they weren't, if it doesn't tight, uh, they would really slip. So at the last show, the elevators stopped working for the last day. It was really frustrating. So now they're chain link and the chain runs right through the center of the elevator. And the other thing I noticed from the last show was that most people didn't notice the elevators. So I put LED lights with little watch batteries in those two elevators, and now almost everybody coming up, they quickly can see that movement and, and know that the elevators are, are moving. So that, that's, um, that's really version two of the upper elevators. Um, and it's using powered up, so there's an app on my iPad controlling it. Um, and that's, yeah, it's working out now. It's been running nonstop all day. I haven't had to touch it, so that's a good thing. And obviously you've got incredible quantities of some of these pieces here. How did you find that many pieces to do this creation? Thank you to BrickLink and some Brick Owl orders. Yeah, there were 40 separate orders on BrickLink over two years uh, from around the world. It's actually really exciting to see the community around the world. And I can, I can just say, like, for this platform, I built it in studio. And I took that whole list into BrickLink, and it sourced it out across like 15 stores. And then I got these massive bags in the mail, and I just started building. It was like so exciting to actually build not just a corner of it as proof of concept, but to actually build the whole thing in the right color with brand new parts. So that was a lot of fun. But uh, I could never have done it with BrickLink because uh, it's so targeted. You get what you need. So do you have any plans to expand on the build in terms of like the parks and environment around the Eiffel Tower at all or just sticking with the model for now? I, I think I need, get, need to get back to my real life for a little while. <laughs> um, no, I, I have another technique build I have in mind for like a year or two from now. It's going to take that long, but a, a really complicated mechanical device that people knew in the 60s. That if, if they saw it, they would know it. Um, and that's going to be my next challenge. But it's not, it's not a bridge or a structure. It's more of a very complicated mechanical device. So uh, that's what I'm gearing up to do next. Will you have this build on display at any other shows in the future? Any plans for that? We, our next show is Brick Palooza in uh, Roseville in November. After that, no plans. Um, maybe Chicago in uh, June, but um, I think I'd have to make a shipping crate. <laughs> um, after driving here for two and a half days, I realized I really can't drive to Chicago. So 
Um, I might have to build a shipping crate to get to Chicago. And if, uh, you know, if the keepers of the Eiffel Tower in Paris ever wanted it on display, I'd be happy to go and set it up there too. <clears throat> well, it's truly an incredible model here. So thank you so much for, for taking us through the whole layout and for all the work you put into building this and for bringing it out to the convention here. I appreciate it. Yeah, great questions. Thanks.